Hello, and welcome to People of the Pod, brought to you by American Jewish Committee. Each week, we take you beyond the headlines to help you understand what they all mean for America, Israel, and the Jewish people. I'm your host, Manya Brashear Pashman. This month, AJC set out to mark the five-year anniversary of the Pittsburgh Synagogue shooting at the Tree of Life with a series of episodes exploring this turning point for the American Jewish community. Our first installment aired October 5th. Two days later, the Jewish people faced another unprecedented deadly anti-Semitic attack, this time in Israel. Synagogues stepped up security, and families tamped down their fears to take their children to Hebrew school or attend Shabbat services. In the second episode of our series, we sat down with Howard and Marnie Feinberg, who paid tribute to their mother, Joyce. In the third installment, we looked back at how the horror drew people to solidarity. For this closing episode of the series, I sat down with AJC CEO Ted Deutsch, who served as a congressman at the time of the Tree of Life massacre. We discussed this anniversary and its parallels to the October 7th attack on Israel, when once again Jews were murdered just for being Jewish. Ted, where were you on the morning of October 27th, 2018, when you heard about the Tree of Life? I was a congressman who represented Parkland, where the mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas took place. And the morning of Tree of Life, I spoke to a group of high school students from all around South Florida who participated in a program about how they can become leaders in the community. I spoke with them about what had happened a few months before in Parkland and what I had seen from high school students in Parkland and how they responded and how you stand up to violence and try to stop it and how you respond to evil and how important it is um, to use the power that you have as young people. That was literally what I was doing right before I walked out of the Florida Atlantic University auditorium and saw my phone start to buzz with news of Tree of Life. Everything that I had said to these students and the discussion, the really difficult conversation we had with these students who shared with me their fears of violence, their fears of going to school, those fears hit home really hard for me and for the Jewish community. So did you view this as a significant turning point for the Jewish community in America or worldwide? This was something that we dealt with in Europe. We feared, we stood, AJC stood with the Jewish community as they were attacked over years. I was a member of Congress when we we had vigils with the ambassadors from European countries in memory of lives lost, Jewish lives lost as a result of anti-Semitic attacks. And here that morning is a turning point for all of us in the Jewish community and how we respond, how we we view the threat of anti-Semitism now as a, a deadly threat to the Jewish community in America and for the rest of America to see another example of what happens when anti-Semitism, hatred are running rampant and where it can lead and how dangerous it is. From that vantage point as a congressman, what shifted on Capitol Hill, if anything, after October 27th? Well, I was a member of Congress, but I focused so much of my work on the Jewish community. And we had started a bipartisan task force to combat anti-Semitism after and in response to what happened in Europe. we never could have imagined something like that happening in our own country, especially in this place. I mean, this is the most idyllic, suburban, lovely neighborhood. I mean, it is, as everyone knows, it is literally Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, right? He lives just a stone's throw from Tree of Life. So our work became that much more urgent, and we immediately refocused our efforts and those of us who were committed to fighting anti-Semitism to ways that that we could 
ensure the security of the Jewish community. And we immediately started looking at ways to find additional funding for security. And we dug deep into FBI reporting and research into what else is out there and what else they're tracking and what the fears are. And unfortunately, whether in Congress, now at AJC, that hasn't stopped since. Did the members of Congress who are not Jewish respond differently? There was real support and support not just for me and my fellow Jewish members, but for the Jewish community overall. Lots of members of Congress, most, know the Jewish community. Many of them have Jewish communities that they focus on in their own districts, sometimes large, sometimes very small. But the security concerns became real for every one of them, whether they had a large thousand family congregation in a major city or a tiny synagogue somewhere in a remote part of the country, everyone felt it, everyone was put on edge, and every member of Congress felt an obligation to respond to that. I just remember having conversations with colleagues who were people of faith, who went to church. They were so struck by the fact that they came and went every Sunday, walked into their churches, doors were wide open, and the contrast to synagogues where You really need to be committed in so many places to go to synagogue because you have to go through security and sometimes you have to check in with the police. And in some places you have to go through metal detectors. That really, really hit them and I think continues to, especially now. Every time something happens in Israel, we see a need for greater security at home. And in the aftermath of the horrific attacked by Hamas, and it's affected Jews, obviously, in Israel and around the world and how we view Israel, but we all fear for what could happen in the United States. You left your job on Capitol Hill and became CEO of AJC just last year. We spoke at length about the impact of the Parkland shooting. But I'm curious whether the horror in Pittsburgh so soon after the Parkland shooting was also an inflection point for you and your path. Well, I wasn't thinking about leaving Congress, but when a friend reached out and asked if I'd be interested in being considered for the AJC job, I started reflecting upon the issues that I worked on and what I had been through. I mean, this fits into a very specific part of that thinking. It was the whole series of what happened, the shooting at Stoneman Douglas, and the impact that that had on the community. Then, almost in immediate succession, quick succession, this horrific shooting at Tree of Life. First, there was the trauma in our own community. Then there was the, the real trauma in the broader Jewish community. And then, not that they're directly related, but on January 6th, when I was sitting in my office with the lights off and my electronic silence, as the Capitol Police told us to do, and I was sitting in a a dark cubicle in our staff office, watching what was happening in the Capitol and listening as people ran by my office and not knowing who they are. Everyone was so concerned about violence that day. And my first thought that day was how grateful I was that I had just moved into this new office and had not yet had an opportunity to hang my mezuzah. And, right, so where does this fit in? Um, I mean, there is, again, I didn't, I didn't, decide to come to AJC because of some series of traumatic events. But just in terms of a turning point for me, what happened at Tree of Life and how that informed the remainder of my time in Congress and the way I thought about my work, and then those fears on January 6th and realizing, again, how at risk I felt Even in the U.S. Capitol, as a Jew, I suppose there is probably a a straight line that I didn't see that was started that day that 
led me to where I am now. So you've been here a year now. How have these events shaped your work since you arrived? AJC's mission is to enhance the well-being of the Jewish people in Israel and to advance democratic values. If we go back to Tree of Life and think about what's transpired since and the rise in anti-Semitism as we saw it around the country and on social media and the many ways that the community has felt at risk. The week I started, Kanye West went on his anti-Semitic rampage on social media, on Twitter. The Jewish community is not well if anti-Semitism is running rampant. So it's why we it's why we work so hard with the White House. It's why we encourage them to create a national strategy. It's why we brought in special envoys from around the world to meet with the White House to help inform the process. It's why why we celebrated the release of the national strategy to combat anti-Semitism and really devoted a large part of our resources over the past six months to helping to implement the national strategy. And it's why we continue to, across the country here, to look for ways to engage further in fighting anti-Semitism by strengthening the relationships we have with others. It's why we're doing so much more in our intergroup work and interreligious work. I just recently visited a new Hindu temple in New Jersey. I think it's the largest, certainly the largest in the United States, one of the largest in the world. And and it was really meaningful to spend the afternoon with leaders of the Hindu community who very much recognize that in many ways our fates in America are intertwined. So in our first episode of this series, our producer, Atara Lakritz, and I went on the last tour of the Tree of Life building. You also walked through the building back in June before many of the artifacts had been removed. Would you mind reflecting on that experience? When I walked up to the synagogue, I couldn't help but think of my synagogue where I grew up on the other side of Pennsylvania in a lovely community like Pittsburgh, I was struck that, forget that this was a synagogue. I really couldn't stop thinking that it was inconceivable that that kind of horrible tragedy could happen in a community like that. And walking through the synagogue and seeing the site where hatred and anti-Semitism and the manifestations, the worst manifestations of anti-Semitism were brought to this lovely place in this wonderful synagogue, it was overwhelming to think about what was happening that Shabbat and the fear and terror that people felt as that was happening. That was number one. Secondly, I walked into the the main auditorium where they were gathering all the things that hadn't yet been taken away to be used in the museum and the memorial that's going to be constructed that haven't been given back to families. And there were lots of things that are just unidentified, that, that they don't have families to return them to and to see Talesim and to fill in and all kinds of items that are used for Jewish rituals and Jewish customs, just sitting on this table where they didn't know what they were going to do with them because the synagogue that existed there, the life that existed there, that simple, wonderful community, that was gone. It was gone. And that community will never be the same. And I think for our community, for the Jewish community, we're really never going to be the same after what happened there. You were telling me before we started this conversation that they gave you something during your visit. As I walked through and they saw how moved I was by this massive display, they came over and made such a kind gesture to me. And, and of all of the, the gifts that I've received and all of my travels as a member of Congress and now as a CEO of AJC, I don't think there's anything that's as meaningful as the tefillin that they gave me. I don't know, obviously, I don't know whose it was, and it may well have been someone that was a synagogue member years and years ago, but the connection that I felt at that moment to that community, that Tree of Life, and the connection that I felt thinking about not just Tree of Life, but tragedies that have befallen the Jewish people throughout our history, and knowing that I was going to return to New York, I was going to have the opportunity to, to join the Jewish community around the world and 
overcoming these tragedies, in making sure the world understands why these kinds of attacks will never, they'll never work, they'll never defeat the Jewish community. As we endure this really challenging time now in Israel, I've been thinking the same thing. We've gone through a lot in our history, and we've constantly, constantly overcome and have grown and have learned and have continued to enrich the world. And as Tree of Life rebuilds and will help shape a national and international conversation for years to come about fighting anti-Semitism, and as we continue to do our work and as Jews around the country and around the world go through whatever security measures they have to, to go to synagogue and to drop their kids at day school and Hebrew school and for people to show up for programs with the JCC, there is a defiance that I felt at that moment that is perhaps the most important thing I took away from that day because it was awful, but I'm not going to dwell on how terrible it was. We're going to think about every way we can to honor the memories of the lives that were taken uh, and to strengthen the Jewish people in their memory as we go forward. We planned this series and invited you to speak before the October 7th terrorist attack in Israel and the war with Hamas that has unfolded since. At first, we wondered whether we should even proceed with this series. How could we focus on anything other than Israel at this moment? Of course, the parallels between the Tree of Life and October 7th are all too stark. Jews are once again being targeted simply because they are Jewish. Can you share your thoughts on this difficult moment for the Jewish people? That sense of unease that all of us felt when we heard that story, like how could that possibly happen in the United States, is really, it's an unease and fear that we feel when we watched what's happened in Israel. And when horrific and brutal and barbaric attack takes place against our family, our brothers and sisters in Israel, we feel that here. And especially when it was unthinkable what happened with this Hamas attack. Just as somebody shooting up a synagogue was unthinkable in America, it, again, it puts us on edge and it makes us redouble our efforts, not just to fight anti-Semitism, but to really bring the community together. That What I've really been proud of since this terrible time in Israel began is the way that AJC has responded not just in putting out meaningful information to help people get the facts and, and get through this and to fight back against lies, but the way that we've really worked to bring the community together. There are 16 million Jews in the world out of 8.5 billion people. We need to stick together, and moments like Tree of Life remind us of that, and what's been happening in Israel absolutely reminds us of that. So that informs so much of what AJC does and has done in response to Tree of Life and certainly is doing in response to the current situation. This episode is brought to you by AJC. Our producer is Atara Lakritz. Our sound engineer is TK Broderick. You can follow People of the Pod on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and learn more at AJC.org slash People of the Pod. The views and opinions of our guests don't necessarily reflect the positions of AJC. You can reach us at People of the Pod at AJC.org. And if you appreciated this episode, please share it with friends and family and write a review on Apple Podcasts.